What's going on, everybody? So Marco and Eric here for another episode of Deadlifts, Dogs, and Dad Jokes. Uh, super excited. Got a really special guest on today, professional rugby player, um, colleague, and friend of ours. Not in rugby. He's not a rugby colleague, obviously. They don't play professional rugby, but he's a fitness guy, strong AF human, and uh, just a really cool dude. Excited to catch up with him. And uh, we're going to talk about some fun stuff. And uh, as always, we're here to help you become your strongest self and have fun along the way. So let's have some fun talking to you, Mr. John Sully Sullivan. Sullivan. You ready? Yes, sir. Kind of turned on right now. <laughs> Got to clip that part out. Definitely. <laughs> My man. Yeah, I can't hear him. It's connecting. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there he is. What's up, buddy? All right. Hey, man. Two seconds. I was trying to join on my laptop, and it just does not want to work. So we're using my phone. That's okay. Oh, we've, had, we've had to do the same thing we, yeah, many we've, times. We've had technical difficulties more times than we can tell, for sure. I'm going to try and get this to – am I upside down? I'm upside down. <laughs> upside down. I love it. Dude, it looks like you're about to go game right now. You're getting, getting on your, your Xbox. This is, a, this is actually my gaming headset. <laughs> That's awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. Ready. You ready, you ready to tear up some, uh, some teenage kids in Halo or Call of Duty? <laughs> nah, man. I, I, actually, I actually don't really play. Uh, I, I play uh, Magic the Gathering with my uh, friends back in Buffalo awesome. every Friday night. Do you do like the cards? Like you do like video yeah. Cards? Well, we we played online. We started during quarantine. Oh man! Um, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun. But I use this to talk to them while we play. Yeah, I used to make. I used to joke about people playing Magic the Gathering, but it's we had a we had a, a, a power outage at my campus when I was in college, and uh, we they taught me the basics of it. And I, I played a couple couple games, and I, I was so fun. I had such yeah. a blast. <laughs> it's a it's a very fun game. There's a lot to it as well. There is. Yeah. 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 My old college roommate played World of Warcraft. Yeah. Same idea. Like, there's so much you can do with that. Oh, I used to play a lot of World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah. You would probably know more, way more than I know, but I'd watch him play and I was like, what's going on? Like, the screen was just chaotic. Like, yeah. What, don't, what, literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> don't be fooled by my career choice or uh, rugged exterior. I'm, I'm very into that scene. I've actually, I got my whole, like, Miniature painting okay. <laughs> corner okay. over here like for Dungeons that. and Dragons, and uh, yeah, that's amazing. We're getting to know the real Sully, like yeah, behind the scenes for the for the fans. <laughs> that's freaking great, man. Well, uh, brother, it's uh, great to have you on. It's it's awesome. See, I don't think I've seen you in like four years. It's been it's been, a been four while. or five years, both of you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, it's been good. When did you start at BSC Wellington? Remember, I was all kind of mad. I'm trying to think of when that was. I started working at BSC Wellington probably uh, ooh fall of twenty seventeen. Yeah, okay, yeah, twenty sixteen. We were trying to figure it out prior to the you know, oh man, that was. But yeah, it was. I remember. I'm trying to think. Derek hired you, right? No, Ann did. Who was it? Oh, Ann. It was okay. Ann. Because oh, I moved. Yeah, I moved to New Orleans like December 2017, maybe November, December 2017. I worked at BSC for about a year and I moved to Boston about a year and a half prior to moving to NOLA. Yeah. So probably, yeah, probably uh, I'm so bad with dates too. I went to school for accounting and I still can barely say the months. <laughs> um, okay. You're good at other numbers. Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we're, we're trainers, man. I, I forget, I'm like using my fingers all the time. I suck at I, counting reps. I mean, plate math. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Plate math, I'm good with. I'm a, I have a PhD in plate math. Yeah, plate math. <laughs> you start like throwing numbers together. I'm like, wait, I gotta use my computers, or I have to like. Oh yeah. Later, and it just happens all the time. <laughs> so you, when you, what brought you to want to be a trainer in the first place? Honestly, man, it was just like um, I was there, and Ann was like, "Hey, do you want a job?" And I was like, "Well, actually, I'm recently unemployed." I need a job. That's great. That's, yeah. great that's, that's your why. I love it. But you obviously uh, well, love training. You love training. So, so. I love. I love. I love the gym. I'm a really big gym guy. Uh, yeah. I always. I haven't always been, but I uh, towards the end of my college career, I started to get really into like all that stuff. And yeah. uh, as I said, I went to school for accounting. Yeah. Uh, I moved to Boston straight after school. 
because uh, I thought there was good rugby opportunities, and yeah. I was doing uh, I was doing temp accounting work. Okay. And I I hated it, man. I did not like it, and I uh, I did it for like I don't know maybe three or four months, and uh, I was just like I'm not about this. I gotta I gotta find some that I actually like, you know. Yeah. And uh, I literally was just like in a weird transition period, and I you know I was spending a lot of time at the gym. Yeah. And uh, Anne was like, hey, like you're here a lot. You just want a job? <laughs> I was like, actually, I need one. Yeah. So that's actually how it happened. No, no interview process. Just you're good. You're on. Uh, well, she like, you know, she saw me always there, like throwing around weight. And, yeah. uh, obviously there was like a bit of an interview yeah. uh, where it was like, Hey, like, you know, you got to take it serious. And like, I wasn't certified at the time either. And she was okay. like, you need to like go get certified. I'll put yeah. you at like desk duty and you can help out and clean up while you get yeah. certified. Yeah. And I just kind of did that. I uh, did some grunt work for a, you know, a month or two. Just got, you know, ACE certification, nothing special. There you go. Um, it, was, it was honestly, it was the easiest to get. And uh, it was a bit of a formality because I, I, uh, I didn't go to school for it. I didn't, you know, I knew a good bit about training. And I, I know I definitely did my due diligence because uh, I didn't want to like, you know, I wanted to do the best for my clients. 100%. Love that. Good yeah, clarity. I'd say we we yeah. we all about serving the person in front of us, and that's you nailed that on the coffin. That's 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 exactly what we. That's do. that's what it's about. Right, it's not about your own day. Thing. Yeah, and you, no, you, you know, kind of had. Oh, go ahead, John. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. No, off. no, no. By all means. I was going to say you you already uh, all, you know you kind of jokingly said I was already there, and they offered me a job. You know, like I do in those in those big box gyms that 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 is the, the quote unquote secret sauce. It's just be being there a lot. Oh yeah, there, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna create opportunities for yourself and you're gonna meet right. people. You're gonna you know you're gonna naturally and organically you know generate leads and, well, and build a business. So I think too. I don't even know when I met you. I mean, I remember I was going popping in at VSU Wellington because I was in Uber and Uber was my main club. And I'd come through usually in the afternoon times. That's where I met this guy and then yep. Sean and Jimmy yep. and all those guys. So I'm trying to think. I mean, I probably just through training. You were you were there and I met you there. But I think right away you you were. Really into lifting, so obviously that helped. You were a meathead, so that's awesome too. And, and hey. <laughs> you wanted to be there. You wanted to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times, people in the industry they get the jobs they think it's going to be quote unquote easy. It's like okay, I can't no, do. that's not what we're about. So yeah. no, dude, that was a hard job. Right, exactly, right. And I, I think you know you have to go in that mindset, like kind of like you you were, you know, especially being, the hours, man. Yeah. The hours. Are oh yeah. But you you wanted to be there, and you took you took all the time as far as kind of probably spending more time than the average individual. To meet people, right? You know, develop yeah. relationships, and that's well, that's huge. I I spent um as I said too, I didn't have a formal background in like training or anything, so right. I, I actually spent like a lot of time, like at at like on my own time, just like trying to like you know program properly and figure out the best like things to suit clients' needs because it wasn't it was never like a cookie cutter. I actually had a few. I had a few cookie cutters where it was just like I want to be jacked and look sexy, and I'm like I. All right, let's just get you on an easy bodybuilding program. But a lot of, I mean, you guys have experienced a lot of it's like, you know, you get like an older client. And they're like, oh, I want to be able to like, you know, get up easily off like the chair or like okay. stuff like that. Basically. I want to move better. And it's like, well, we got to figure out a way to like cater this training to you working around injuries and limitations. And it was, uh, it was actually one of the most rewarding jobs I've had in yeah. a lot of ways. Well, I think too, and you kind of alluded to it, but like, you got to figure out sort of ways to program for different types of people. And what, mm -hmm. once you figure that out, you sort of develop those systems. And then all of a sudden you, you know, you can build a template for X individual, whoever that may be. So I think you can oh, yeah. probably figure that out as time went on. Like in the beginning, it was more of kind of get your feet wet a little bit. And then from there you kind of took off. Yeah. I still got, I still got a huge, uh, Google, uh, sheets, uh, like, just master list of all like the programming I've done. I think I remember my clients. Like, time. I think I, I don't know if I took over for one of your clients or something, but I think you had a, I can't remember who it is. I'm going to forget his name, but you gave, like when you left, I think I took over one of your, your, your people and you gave me, you gave me a bunch of Google sheets. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. and like, yeah, it was, it was a lot of stuff, but it was great. I mean, you, you, you probably put a lot of time into that, figuring yep. out you know, where you wanted to be with it. And like based on his goals, obviously, and things like that. So um, I think, and I was, had, was it? I was great with Google Sheets too because of the accounting degree. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I did put it to use. That's good carryover yes. right there. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing too is like you personalized it. That was the key thing. I remember even when I would talk to him, we were blanking on his name, but regardless, the, the, the key was he, 
he definitely knew it was for him. It was, it was, it was based on his goals, based on his background, his injuries and all that stuff. So um, yeah, it, it definitely, considering you were like a new trainer, I think you were kind of ahead of the curve a little bit. So I'm sure you can agree with that. So I think, yeah, I mean, yeah, because yeah. you put the time in, I think, you know, you, you didn't just treat it like, you know, a, a you gotta, you gotta put the time in. Yeah. I don't no. say like a nine to five job, but I think you put that extra effort in that, that it showed for sure. I loved it. I just loved it too, man. You know, cause like even, even I'm like, you know, I'm like programming for these people and it's like, Oh, you know, this is, I'm not getting paid for the extra hours as part of my job. But at the same time, like I enjoyed it. I like learning about, you know, all that stuff and how the human body works and how different people, you know, operate and how to help them achieve their goals. Cause no, nobody's the same at the end of the day. Yeah. hundred percent, man. What do you got to talk about? Definitely. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I couldn't agree more with everything you just said. How did you, when did you first start playing rugby and, and what, was, what was the process of you, you know, going from that to professional rugby? Yeah, so, um, I, 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 against the story. Yeah. I got a story. Don't worry. I got a story for everything, man. <laughs> uh, so I was a sophomore in high school and I was like, as I, you know, had said previously, uh, I played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and like, you know, World of Warcraft and like. Diablo and computer games. I was a huge nerd, man. Um, and uh, my buddy was like, "Hey, my brother, you know, plays a sport called rugby. Uh, I want to try it out. Like, will you come? Like, try it out with me?" And I was like, "You know, I was a pretty rowdy, dude." And I was like, "I, you know, sure, whatever. Uh, let's let's try it out." And uh, I loved it, man. I fell in love the first the first training session. You know, it's just like, oh, we get to like you know beat the crap out of each other and it's encouraged. Like, this is great. A little, little um, bit of padding, right? There's not a lot of padding. Football without pads, right? Pretty much. I wear a little scrum cap. It's like half to, you know, protect my head, but also I just have so much hair these days. It helps with that too. Um, but you wear a mouth guard, and that's it, really. Um, yeah, I never played sports. Either. I even even now I know like I know next to nothing about any sports. I know oh, yeah. rugby and I know lifting weights. <laughs> And that's it. So uh, I, I kind of took to it right away. The buddy actually didn't really like it that much, and he kind of quit after a year or two. Wait, uh, how old was, did you start playing rugby? What, what age were you when you started? I was like 16. I was a sophomore in high school, so I was probably 16 years old. Yeah. And you were, you were probably trying to bulk up at that time, right? Just put on some weight? Nah, dude. It. I didn't even know how to lift weights until I was like a grown-ass man. Really? Yeah, yeah. dude. I didn't, start, I didn't start hitting the gym for real until I was like 20. Okay. Yeah, I think that's I was a lot. skinny. I, think that's a lot of our, I mean, I was the same way, too. I was, I was, it was more of like, yeah, 19 or 20 when I actually started going to the gym. I was the same way. Yeah, I was on the old, like, you know, like my dad's, uh, you know, gym program where it's like, oh, I'll go run a few miles and bench and we're good. Well, <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe some bar, barbell curls. Old school, man. Yeah, some curls. But, uh, yeah, I started, I started at 16 years old. I ran a bit of track as well. But that was, honestly, that was more for just, like, the social. Yeah. Just, like, hanging out. I wasn't, I wasn't very good at track. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just took I took to rugby. I went to St. Bonaventure University, okay, because um, they had a good uh, they had a solid rugby team, uh, and I had known the coach from high school, and they had a good business program, which is you know what I wanted to pursue. Um, I played there for uh, all five years I was there. Um, grad school, not victory lap, um, with the fifth year, and then uh, I moved to Boston after college because uh it, it was just a, it was a solid team they had just won the national championship it seemed like a good opportunity i shared it with the coach he seemed like a stand-up guy um played there for about a year and a half that and then mlr started which is the league i play in now what's that and, uh, major league rugby so that's gonna be easy as hell yeah so that, yep. that, that's a professional rugby yes okay. it is a professional rugby union league uh, which is kind of confusing because there's rugby league and rugby union. We play rugby union rules; they're different rules, but it's yeah. called major league rugby. But uh, it's it's got like 13 teams now. Uh, you know, we just played uh, Boston. We actually played just played Boston yesterday. Awesome. Yeah, really? but um, now we lost, man. I'm I'm, I'm bummed. <laughs> but there's teams all over the country. Uh, there's a team in Canada. You know, everywhere from San Diego to Seattle to new orleans to toronto that's awesome so get to travel a lot but the league started um and i had like a like a really tiny in at like new orleans yep um so i just kind of packed up my civic and moved there and was like hey what's up there you go 
hey, and it just worked out. You were ready for whatever, right? Oh yeah. Well, I you know it's that transient lifestyle, man. Like even when I moved to Boston, like I you know I could have packed my car up and gone in a day if I wanted, which is kind of like a wild thing. But you know, I was young. Yeah. Was I was just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Hundred percent, man. That's awesome. So yeah, I mean that's all cool stuff. I think uh, I I knew you played rugby. I didn't know what league it was in and stuff like that. And uh, so you, you're you've been doing this for geez, probably f- how old are you now? Twenty. I'm going to turn twenty nine in a few months. So you're like what over over twenty. So like fifteen uh, years of rugby, pretty much, right? About yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. Wow, damn. So what? Like, tell us a little bit about even like the training. What's that look like for, for rugby? Training? I know, I know. I mean, it's kind of a loaded question, but we're like, no, it's a great question. So, yeah, um, it doing depends. Now? It depends on when you ask me. So, uh, yeah. one of the things about my rugby career is that uh, I've played a lot of different positions. Yeah. So, um, I, uh, I'll, I'll I guess, I guess here. Tell, tell us about maybe what it used to look like. Maybe. Yeah. Years ago so, or- um, my professional career, I played, um, I've played like genuinely like almost every position out there throughout the years, but professionally I got signed in new Orleans as like a lock slash like flanker. Yep. And okay. I'm, I'm like, I'm definitely not a lock. I'm like three or four inches too short, <laughs> but, um, I, I was very like flankers are just like, they're, they're lean. They're really good athletes. They're great at like getting over the ball and like yep. tackling. And they're just like, you know, I uh, just got to be like the energizer bunny, just get involved, yep. get involved, get involved. Um, so I was a lot leaner back then, um, and conditioning mattered a lot more. Gotcha. Um, yeah, like it was, it was basically when you guys knew me as I was playing flanker. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, uh, honestly a lot of, you know, like power work cause you want to be explosive. Mm-hmm. Um, cause it is like, it's kind of like, you know, max effort rugby in general is, is a lot of like stop, start max effort. Maybe right. jog for 10 seconds, max effort, jog for 10 seconds, stuff like that. And that's across the board. You you want that power, you want that explosiveness, but you also need a good like aerobic base to actually be able to play for like 60 or 80 minutes. Yep. And you want to balance that with like, you know, being big enough to not, you know, get dominated. And it's a very physical game, obviously. Right. So you're still hitting your compounds and you're still getting all the, the big lifts and stuff like you're that. You're hitting your compounds, you're hitting your circuits, uh, a lot of like metabolic conditioning. Uh, nice. Yeah. A lot of interval training with running, a lot of up downs. Um, yeah. Then about, about two years ago, uh, two and a half years ago, I, I actually switched from flanker. My coach at the time was like, hey, we think you'd make a good prop. And uh, props is it, are the position is that, is that you have to be bigger for that one. Yeah. Yes, very much so. <laughs> yeah. So I was about it. I was like, sure, man. You know, I and it's, like there's a lot of competition for flanker and props are more specialized position. And if you're an American prop, uh, you, you're going to have an easier time finding a team. People are going to want you a bit more. So I was about it, and I spent I I, spent, I gained about forty pounds in the off season. Nice. Jeez, in, the, wow. in the worst way possible. <laughs> yes, how did you do it? <laughs> Little Caesar's pizza and ice cream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So I gained like 40 pounds. Um, oh, a dirty bulk. Yeah. It was a, it was a very dirty bulk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dirty bulk. <laughs> it was very, it was bad, dude. I, I legitimately was like, I'm just going to try and get fat and see what happens. <laughs> And I got kind of fat, <laughs> but you know, I put the weight on cause I'd always struggled putting weight on. So uh, yeah. I put the weight on, but honestly it was like, dude, it was the dream. Like imagine just being like, I got to gain a bunch of weight and it's for work. So nobody can say anything. And you just get to be huge, man. Dude, my bench went up 40 pounds and I didn't bench for like six months. Yeah. yeah. Your weight was it was just up. like, just, I literally just gained weight and it was like, Oh man. I can bench 40 more pounds now. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was, it was nice. Your training, training present day. What's that look like? Um, well, so for real quick for the dirty bulk, I added a ton of volume. I cut out a lot of the running, which wasn't great, but I added a ton of volume cause I was trying to keep it like, you know, trying to gain as much muscle while I was doing this crazy bulk as exactly. I could just lift heavy, get the extras in a lot of accessory work. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
these days, uh, it's more of a maintenance thing. Um, you know, I'm pretty much the size I want to be. Yep. Um, and uh, we're in season two, so it's like actually like I hate it how little like it's like less right less frequently. What what'd you say? I say you're you're lifting less frequently, like you're lifting weights less frequently now. Probably. Yeah. So um, right now it's we're in season, so the training load's like a lot lower, which you know obviously it has to be, or else you'll just like break down. You can't like expect to, like be go crazy in the gym in season, or you'll just like hurt yourself. Yeah. But it's it's like. Uh, it, yeah, it's it's like um like a lower body day and an upper body day at the beginning of the week, and then like a like a speed and power day yeah. at the end of the week. So three three days a week. About. Yeah, I'd say about three days. We also train. We get two like big training trainings in a week as well. So uh, it would, the typical layout would be like Monday might be like upper body lift, get your body right after a game on the weekend. Mm-hmm. No load on the legs, really. No running. Tuesday would be like a big day where it would be lower body lift, hard training session with a lot of meters, um, hitting like, I don't know, 7K, 8K, maybe at a training session, mm-hmm. depending on your position. You know, yeah. back uh, backs will hit more. I'll hit last because I'm a prop. <laughs> but it's a. Uh, good amount of meters and then we'll like as forwards we'll hit set pieces which is actually very very taxing so we'll hit like scrums on tuesday um and that's the big thing as a prop actually is scrumming so we'll we'll do that wednesday is usually off off get some treatment if you need it recovery thursday's more of a contact day yep so you're you're hitting set pieces as well but it's for our team at least it's you know it's like malls and then uh, more of a contact day training and uh, a speed speed focus lift. Nice. Yeah, really Friday cool. off travel, Saturday game, Sunday off travel. Jeez, full, that's a full time job there, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it seems like you're regimented. You have you have a good schedule and you're you stuck to it, so that's good. For the most yeah, part. Yeah, I like it. I, yeah. I think it's 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 a it's it's a cool job, you know. At the end of the day, like it, it is a lot and. It it seems like a lot of fun where it's like oh you just get to play sports all day but it's a lot of work, oh, yeah. um and it's you know, it's just cool though. I get to travel a lot I get to I live in like a house with like a bunch of my best friends and then we just get to hang out all day and like lift weights and like play sports. That is the, so, the dream. That is, cool. You're living the dream right now. I'm living the dream, man. It's great. Wow. So you you said these are all like your teammates, your rugby teammates you live with. Yeah. That's great. great. That's good to keep each other accountable too, and and. Uh, get that uh, support kind of make sure everybody keeps their ass in gear. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I really enjoy the uh, team culture for this, like this team I'm on now, which is rugby ATL, rugby Atlanta. It's, it's a lot of just like, you know, like just shut up, work harder, (laughs) you know, just like do your extras, just put the work in. It's a, it's a big uh, accountability culture, which I I think is a huge thing. Right. That's awesome. No, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it has to do with culture as far as like when you're in any sports environment or anywhere, anywhere you are, really work work environment, you know, that that all, the culture really dictates, I guess, the work that'll, that'll be put out more or less. So, and I was going to say next, what, what about um, pivoting to more like COVID? So when COVID hit, like what had that change for you and things like that? So, that was um, to sound very selfish about the situation. That was actually best case scenario for me, because um, I, as I said, I, you know, I gained forty pounds in like the worst way possible. Yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> and then uh, COVID hit, and our season got canceled like part way through. And I was, you know, I was very new to being a prop at the time as well. Yeah. And it's it's a really it is a very specialized position. It's it's actually really hard. Uh, it's Transitioning to prop is probably one of the hardest things I've done in my life because it's just, it's it's a lot. Mm-hmm. But uh, co- COVID happening kind of shut everything down. I kind of I, I leaned out and gained the weight like a lot better of a way. Sure. Yeah. Recomped, yeah. Yeah, I just I recomped it, uh, and then I you know I had a lot of time to practice scrubbing, <laughs> which you know you can only do so much on your own, but a lot of it is just like getting used to the process and getting comfortable with it, you know, right. So I, I had a lot of time to kind of sort that out. 
Right. That makes sense. And how you just had one season canceled? Yeah, we had one season canceled, so it got canceled partway through. Yeah. Um, I was in Louisiana at the time. Our gym got shut down, so uh, me and a couple of the other big boys just like lifted weights in the one guy's like backyard every day. Yeah, I love those just, videos. Out of it. Yeah, those badass. videos are those, really those fired badass. me up, man. Yeah, yeah, man, just getting after it. Yeah, talk about me. Yeah, those are some media yeah. videos. I loved every minute. Did you build that power rack, or was that a buddy's oh, like yeah. rack? The wooden, the wooden rack you were using. That was mine. I built that when I got back home. Dude, that's awesome. I love that. Uh, talk about a MacGyver. Yeah, that uh, was MacGyver and the shit out of it. That was pretty cool, man. I reached like I achieved like peak bro status during COVID, to be honest. Because I, I was so I was with uh, I was with uh, my girlfriend at the time, and we were we were moving. She was uh, Coast Guard. And we were moving from uh, Louisiana to New Jersey. And uh, w- there was some issues with our, our housing when we got there, so we were living out of a hotel for like two weeks. And I, oh, I, the only thing in my car, I had a, I had a Subaru Forester. The only thing in my car was that two by four squat rack I built, a barbell, and five hundred pounds of weights. And I would lift weights in the the hotel parking lot. <laughs> what else do you yeah, need, man? You, you got need? the weights. Yeah. In the car. That's it. I would just like go out there and just like unload like a gym out of my car, like right, right between the dog park and the dumpster, some prime real estate. The American That's dream amazing. right there. Really. <laughs> yeah. that, that was my, that was my training business for the whole <laughs> shutdown. So like we, my, one of my clients was uh, getting into barbell training and she would show up with her, uh, she would bring her barbell and uh, her plates and everything. And we would show up in one of the station landing underground garages, the one right next to the H&R block. I've That's seen the videos. Okay. Yeah. We're down there, do some deadlifts and, and, uh, Squat and everything, I I, and I saw those get videos, it done. Yeah. Pull it out of the trunk of the car. <laughs> Pretty much, COVID definitely impacted uh, that first season. But after that, it was it was pretty business as usual. We got tested pretty frequently that season after. But you know they can't shut down for a long period, especially like this early in the league's existence. So we yeah. got through it. It was pretty good. I I feel like you guys would have taken a big hit from that though. Like how is it with you and training and all that? Yeah, uh, for for me, so I'm at Lifetime now in Burlington. I don't know if you know Lifetimes. Yeah. Um, so I actually during yeah I got furloughed during COVID. So I moved home to my parents' house for geez probably like seven eight months. Saved a bunch of money, which was good. Sure. I did, I did a bunch. Of, like, so my my dad actually had an old school bench press. So like you know he had a bunch of weights, you know, free weights. He had a pull up bar and stuff like that. So I was I was still able to get after it, and then. Uh, a couple of my clients, I would just train through like Zooms and stuff like that. So yep. I was still able to kind of maintain, I don't want to say a full business. It was probably like a quarter of it, but because I was living home, it didn't, you know, money didn't matter as much. I was able to kind of just save more or less just by not paying rent and not having to worry about sure. it. So really for me, it was like eight months of just kind of figuring out my schedule, figuring out maybe what works best for me as far as a routine. And then kind of stuck with that all of, all of COVID. Yep. Then I moved back and actually when I first started back, it was kind of tough because the gyms were so dead. Like when I, I started back, geez, it was probably like, I don't remember when it was, September 2020. Yeah, September 2020. Like, yeah. yeah, like seven or eight months after the shutdown-ish around that time. And, and everyone had to wear masks. So that was the big thing. And a lot of people were complaining about that and like people weren't showing up. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, so man. it really, for me anyways, I don't know for you, Marco, but my business took a hit for probably at least a year or maybe give or take. And then, then it started to pick up again. And now I'm kind of back to full circle, back to full business and you know, things are going well. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it was uh, honestly kind of like you, Sully. It was a, it was selfishly for me, it was a great time for me as well. <laughs> Cause I, I had just gotten my uh, kettlebell certification. Right, I had a couple yeah, bells. Yeah. So I, uh, I just worked out pretty much every day cause there was nothing else to do. Um, you know, I got laid off and then actually our gym, I'm sure you've heard That's from right. somebody, well, our gym yeah. shut down, like went out of business. Um, they, uh, they're done. Like, it's no more. It's going to be, you know, it's gonna be a lifetime. Did I you know didn't that? know that. I had no idea. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, you, it would be, it would be like a ghost town if you went back because the, the, the SC Wellington is, is, uh, is, is closed. Right. The Walgreens on the corner is now closed. I didn't know that. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of wild. And, and there's, uh, a couple new things are coming, but, but anyways, but I just worked out and then. I, I joking, I joke with everybody that uh, I was able to, you know, get, you know, a lot closer and form a deeper relationship with my wife, you know, so much to the point that we, you know, our first child. So 
um, we, we, we found other, other uses for the extra time. Sure. I saw that, by the way. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. Yeah, thank you yeah. so much. So but it was a great transition, man. I transitioned into kind of um, part-time training, you know, running a little bit of a small business and then uh, stay-at-home dad, man, L- lifting and running around with the kid. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you know, it's, that's that's great too, man. You know, like I feel like COVID it, as a whole really it really disrupted a lot of people's lives, and it was really bad for yeah. so many reasons. But it also did kind of like you know, I I got into some new stuff through it, and I'm sure a lot of other people did. And you kind of pursue other things, and you just overcome it. Yeah, I yeah. think it, it helped realign like what really mattered too. You know, oh, yeah. Certain, oh yeah, certain matters. Screw that. I don't need that. You know, one so. of my one of my favorite quotes from from the book is the the art of war, which everybody quotes. It. It's a pretty popular book from Sun Tzu. It's uh, with with chaos comes opportunity. That's something I always kind of think of. Is when when shit hits the fan, there's uh, bad things do happen, obviously. But there's there's always a you know there's always a way to adapt and Definitely. make something make something better, make something out of nothing. Definitely. So. Yeah, no, I agree. So what's your future career goals? I know if you, with rugby, you're just kind of doing that. Or what's, where, where are you looking to go? Any, anywhere in particular? Sorry. Man, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> I wish I had a good answer. Yeah. I honestly <laughs> honestly don't really know. Um, I kind of take it, you know, a day at a time, especially yeah. in season. Yeah. And uh, I know, I know, like, obviously I'm, I'm not delusional. You know, my days are numbered with rugby. I can't do this forever. It's not a career. Well, you're, not like, you're not Tom Brady. You're not Tom Brady. I'm not Tom Brady. I don't. Program, bro? <laughs> no, definitely not a career. Yes, twelve program. Yes, <laughs> twelve. So what number are you? What number are you? Uh three. So JS three. Oh, JS three. Okay, okay, TV. Or, or one, have... or seventeen or eighteen. It depends on what position I play that week, yes, or if I'm on the bench or starting. Three, seventeen, eighteen. That's great. We're covering our bases here. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I think, uh, well, you know, as I said before, I got the academy degree and the MBA and all that. So I, I think I'd want to use that. I just don't really know how. I don't know yeah. if I'd want to venture out and try and start something on my own or maybe go into sales. Uh, I think that would, I think I would like sales a lot. Do you want to stay put where you are or you want to move around? I have no idea, to be honest. Yeah, sorry, yeah. That's cool, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I, you know, all my, all my family is, you know, back in Buffalo for the most part. Yep, but I also hate winter. Yeah, so yeah, you get hit so hard up there. Jeez. Yeah, man. So I don't really know. I'm just gonna kind of play it by ear, you know. See what see what doors open. A cool thing about rugby as well is it does open. You know, it opens a lot of doors. It's great for networking because you just get a a pretty uh, tight community where it's like it's great for me because like you know I I moved to Atlanta and I immediately had like 40 friends. Which is great because I'm terrible at making friends. <laughs> no, I understand. I'm I'm from a military family, and I I moved around a lot too. And it's a uh, it, that that is nice to have kind of a network and a community already already there. Yep. Just have to be like it's like you're asking people out on first dates, like, "Hey, bro, you want to go do something?" You know? Let's grab a beer, man. Let's grab a beer, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you seem cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's definitely a weird dynamic, especially like as a, an adult trying to make new friends. Yeah, exactly. So. exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I like you know, it's like I move in, I move in with like some dudes, and I'm like, well, I hope they're cool guys because we're gonna be best friends now. Yeah, exactly. It's like the show, what the the real world, the real world uh, MTV. Exactly. He's, he's moving a house with a bunch of strangers. The much. real, yep. the real bros of uh, yep. New Orleans. <laughs> real bros of yep, real bros of rugby ATL. The bros of rugby. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's good. It's a great. Uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of really good dudes on this team as well, which was which was a, a godsend because especially I, uh, even a few guys like I went to college with like one of my teammates, Eamon, and uh, he was a, he was actually a freshman when I was in my my fifth year, my grad year at Bonaventure, and I was like I I shit you not, I was like chatting with him when I was like I was looking for new teams over the off season, and I was like, hey man, like I'm looking at ATL. And the word on the street is that you run a D&D campaign. And if I go there, do I have a spot at your table? And he was like, yeah, man, 100%. <laughs> I was like, all right, well. Hey, let's go. That's a big That's a big plus for the rugby HL then. Definitely. That's man. freaking cool. Well, if you, had, yeah, if, you so. do it, if you had to do it all over again, would you change anything in the last, in the last 15 years as far as how you approach the career, your rugby career, or your whole career? It's tough. That's a tough question, man. Because like, you look back and like the decisions that you make like make you the person you are. Yeah, totally. So, good I mean, I have a lot of <laughs> yourself, personal 
yeah, personal and professional life, you know, we all have our regrets, but you know, if you did it different, would you still be who you are and right. all that? Not to get weird and philosophical with it, but you know, I, that's a thing I've oh. thought about too. Cause you know, I've been, I've been running around, you know, I, I see like guys I went to school with and it's like, they got like, you know, a wife and a kid and like a great job. And it's like, I've been running around like living the bachelor life, playing sports, just like tearing it up. And it's kind of like, Oh man, like could have been different, but I'm yeah. pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with, you know, where I am. And I, you know, I get, I got to travel around and it just kind of made me like a more level headed person. Cause yeah, for sure you just get to see things and experience things and it is like, it's a grind too. Right. So it kind of like puts things in perspective. Totally. Yeah. It seems like you, you've been in a lot of different places. So like you said, you, you're based on your experiences. It's brought you to where you are now. Yeah. So I, I don't think I would change anything. I actually, I would start working out sooner. Definitely. That's the one thing. Yeah, you know, that yeah. I was kinda of hoping you'd say that. Build yeah. that, build that. Yeah. Base. I'm kinda of yeah. in the same boat, man. Yeah, I wish I like I wish I was like fourteen just lifting weights. I was oh, thinking, could you imagine? Oh my god, for any of us, really, you too, right? We'd be calling you Sully Schwarzenegger. Ah, <laughs> uh, I wish. <laughs> so, yeah. Take it away, DeMarco. We got yeah, no, I think those are those are all great answers, man. I, I kind of I want to go a little deeper into one of your questions. You mentioned kind of philosophically. Oh yeah, and I love that kind of stuff. By the way, that's, that's I know you do. My wheelhouse. I love going. I love going yeah. deep. Um, what is your and feel free to go to to go expand on this if you want to. But for your own kind of personal development and just both professional and personal. What is your favorite aspect of, of being on a team, of being on the rugby team around those guys? Hmm, that's a great question. I think it um, – okay, let me think before I answer. What's my no, favorite that's... aspect about being on a team personally? And, okay. I would say it's a great motivator um, is, is – the the easy answer and it's because you so you know you maybe you don't want to do something you know you know you got to do it and you don't want to do it you got to go to the gym or you got to like go watch film or do whatever and you know if you don't have a team environment it's easy to just be like well that's whatever but in a team environment it's like oh like my roommate's over there watching film now or he's at the clubhouse lifting weights or getting treatment. And, you know, if you don't do it, it's not, you're not letting yourself down. You're letting your teammates down yeah. and you just, it's just like, that's just, you know, you can't do that. So I think it's, it's, it keeps you accountable. So it's like a bigger picture almost, right? So like you, you, like you realize it's not just you, it's all these other people too. So it's, it's, it's greater than the game almost. It is. And it, you know, there's, there's aspects of that too, where it's like, I, you know, I don't want to let, I don't want to let my friends and teammates down. And also, it's a very competitive job sure. and you better, you better believe that the guy trying to take your job isn't taking days off. Right. So it, it keeps you accountable and that you, you want to, you know, do what's best for your team and your friends, but it also motivates you because that guy behind you is hoping that you take those reps off because he wants, he wants your job, man. Yeah. 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 So I couldn't, agree, couldn't agree more with that. That's a great answer. Yeah. I love that. And I, I feel very much the same way. Not that I've, played professionally but we definitely had that kind of atmosphere with uh with the tight group at least at bsc with, yeah. the, with the coaches and definitely like you me mike sean jimmy and all that stuff and jimmy so, yeah um yeah that's a that's a great answer man you ready to the lightning round yeah you ready for lightning a lightning round? round oh boy i'm not good at lightning rounds but no, let's no go right. for it this is wrong don't worry yeah. <laughs> so I know you said you don't know other sports as much, so don't feel pressured. You could pass on any of these and skip or whatever. But if you had to think of, if you could think of a an NFL player, like Hall of Famer or a current player that you would want on your rugby team, who, who would it be? Uh, I got to go with the obvious answer, Paul Laskey, because he, he plays on, uh, is he with Utah maybe? But yes. he's... Yeah, he was. He's been playing for a while, and he's a ridiculous athlete. That's all. So he was NFL and went to rugby after. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, I didn't know that. That's really cool. What was his name? Who? Paul Lasky. I'm probably not saying his name right. 
L A S I K E. Okay, we're gonna Google it. That's really cool. Yeah, I love Google it. Multiple sport athletes. They they fascinate me. I think it's really cool. What is your walkout song? You have one song to go out to. What is it? Oh, that's a great question. Oh, geez, I'm bad at lightning rounds. <laughs> I don't know. Probably some real like edgy, like some old school Lincoln Park man. I don't know. Oh, all, all about it. All about it. Yeah. So your page is, is I just got to say, it's really fun. I love watching all your videos. And then the DIY squat rack is, is badass, uh, which reminds me, I may actually message you for some details on that if you time because I may want to go for it, man. Together a pull up, pull up bar thing. But, anyways, you've done some really badass lifts. I've seen you do some cool stuff in the gym, I've seen you do some cool stuff on the internet. What is the one lift where you look back and go, Fuck yeah, I really crushed it. Like your your proudest lift. Oh man. Uh probably the thousand pound tire flip. I don't actually know if it was a thousand pounds. It felt like a thousand pounds. It looks like I feel like I feel like every gym's like, this is a thousand pound tire. But I kinda believe this one. Cause uh I, I flipped it I flipped it like two or three times actually, because I uh not all in a row, obviously, but yeah, yeah. I wanted to get I, one time I did it and I was like, I don't think I'm going to do this. And I like ended up doing it and I didn't have a video. And the second video was terrible. And uh, I've done it a couple of times, but that was, um, that was, that was really hard, man. And I, I actually, I shouldn't have been messing around with that. Cause that's like a great way, especially if you don't really know what you're doing to like tear a bicep. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He set up a yeah. few guys at the gym had like torn their biceps doing it. And I found out about that. Like after the last time I did, and I was like, well, I'm not touching that ever again. They treat it. They treat it like a deadlift, right? They get up right up on it. And it's just, that yeah. Cheering, yeah. The cheering force. Yeah. That's what cool. I saw that video, by the way, it was pretty, pretty I'll sick. have to watch it. I don't know why I haven't <laughs> watched that, it. but it's, uh, it's yeah. You posted it to your page, right? It was on there. Oh yeah. It's on my Instagram. Yeah. Uh, it's down a bit. I'd say, honestly, I'd say it was that, or I hit a 345 pound uh, power clean and got it overhead. It was not pretty, but I got it overhead. Yeah. 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 Well, that's one I thing was, I really, sorry to go off. Like, yeah, quick, yeah, yeah. One thing I really respect about you, Sully, as a, just as a lifter, is uh, I remember the first time I saw you in the gym, you were, you were already playing rugby and you weren't training anymore. You were just kind of working out. I think you were just in town, maybe visiting friends or whatever. And uh, I mean, I just, I saw you doing, you know, the Zercher squat with 455, which just like, <laughs> I saw that and I was just like, oh my God, I, I got to step my freaking game you up. You initially like deadlifted but it, But right? you lift, you lift heavy, yeah. you, it, you lift heavy, but you do it right. And yeah, you, you grind and you know your body, you know your body well enough to where you can, you can grind out a lift, but you, you do it right. Your technique doesn't really break down I agree with that uh, too. when yeah. you go really heavy on the lifts yep. and you keep it pretty, pretty safe, I would say. He's like, for the most part. For, for I've done... We- I've done a lot of really dumb stuff in the gym. Oh, we all have. But, yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm very confident in my ability. I don't think I've ever really hurt myself doing any of it. Obviously, like, you know, you like, nah, actually not even. I, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty like dead set. I'm like, I'm going to do dumb stuff, but like, I know my limits. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. My mom had the best piece of advice when I was growing up. She said, DeMarco, if you're going to be an idiot, at least be smart about it. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. So there's something to that. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's so much fun just to do those dumb lifts too, man. Like I live for that stuff. Yeah. Well, actually, even oh, Adam, if, you, if you had one piece of equipment, only one piece, what would it be? Barbell. Yep. Barbell. I knew you'd yeah. say so. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. What kind of question is <laughs> that? <laughs> People give some crazy yeah. answers. If you had an opportunity to sit down and have either a coffee, a beer, uh, or a root beer float <laughs> with uh, with a with a famous athlete, like past, present, future. Who would it be and why? Oh, man, I'd do Tom Brady and figure out how I could keep playing forever. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> right? yeah, get, Tom, I'm getting old, man. Give me the secret. Give you access to the Lazarus pit, right? Yeah. <laughs> Great question. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he would be very, very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Who was your, who's your favorite superhero? Who's my favorite superhero? Oh, man, maybe the Punisher. Oh, yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Frank Castle, I love the Punisher. Yeah, yeah, probably the Punisher or Wolverine. Yep, like him too. Yep, Wolverine's great. You got the long hair, so I feel like you could yeah, you, you could rock a you, you could rock a Wolverine sure. look. You pull it pull it back with the. Uh, oh, the, the Mark, I know you're a huge comic guy. Who's your favorite? Who's your favorite superhero? I'm a I'm a I'm a Batman guy all the way. I love. I've been. Did you Batman see the new Batman? My whole life. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, Did it you watch cool. it? 
I haven't seen it yet. I, you know, I love Robert Pattinson though. I'm so excited. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Did yeah, you good. did you like the Dark Knight? Were you a fan of the Dark Knight? Of course, yeah. I right, then if you love the Dark Knight, you're probably going to love this one. You you may even love it more depending on kind of what you liked most about the Dark. Well, Knight. I heard it follows the comic book really well. And I, yeah, and my yeah. client I went with, he said it's it's, it's darker it's it. and it's like the Riddler in this movie is oh, uh, is is very much the opposite of the Jim Carrey Riddler from Batman. Oh my Riddler. god, yeah, it's oh, uh, so serious. It's great. Yeah, I think you'll I think you'll love it. I'm excited to see it for sure. That's gonna be good. And there's there's actually we're, there's word on the street that since the the the, the uh, mergers happened with Disney Marvel, that uh, they're about to bring back the Punisher. That's the word on the street is they're gonna bring back yeah, the series, that. and then like, I think go. they're gonna introduce his character into the the Marvel universe. So I, I would I like that. Get some more, and I think it's gonna be the same guy, John Bernthal, who I love. So I think he, I yeah, think he was so good. Cool. Yeah, he's great. He's just a bad. He's a bad dude, man. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> he's awesome, yeah. and he's he's very comic book accurate because he's the Punisher. Literally, just kills people. He just if you're a bad guy, he'll kill you. He has no. It's, hard, it's hardcore, man. He takes you out. I mean, he you know so yeah, he's basically like Dexter, but with a gun. You know, yeah. <laughs> <For less. laughs> so you're up. Yeah. Oh, so uh, we were talking about other sports. This might be an interesting question for you. If you so I, I love talking about like Kobe Bryant. Everyone talks about Kobe. Like he used to play soccer when he was growing up, and he potentially was going to play pro soccer. You know, even though he obviously he went into the NBA. What other sport would you play professionally if you could? Uh, I think if I could hack it, I think I'd be a half decent like football player. Yeah, because I do. I rely on physicality a lot in my game, and I'm just like, yeah. I I try to you know be about it um what position do you think you would you would play well at i don't know anything about football (laughs) (laughs) i just i yeah i don't i couldn't tell you i probably wouldn't to be honest either because it is i feel like i don't once again i don't know anything about football i don't know what i'm talking about but i feel like it's a really one-dimensional sport like you it's just x's and o's you get in the field you run your route and that's it I don't think I would love that. Um, honestly, if I was going to do a different sport, I would probably just like gain a hundred pounds and get into strongman. Oh yeah, I could definitely. I, I, could I definitely watched. Doing that. I watched the strongman the other day. I think it was ESPN, and it was great. Oh my god, it's so fun to watch. Yeah, I was loving it. I was sending so good. Clips to my buddies. I think I might have sent one to you. I was just yeah. sending, sending clips to everybody. I thought it was hilarious. It was it was great to watch. It was really competitive, and those guys are massive. Those are they are huge. Oh yeah. They can lift, I'll tell you what. And what's yeah. crazy about them is their their work capacity and endurance is also good. very yeah. impressive yeah. to do it's a big part of it. Reps. Yeah, I mean it, it, they're 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 very interesting athletes, that's for sure. I think I strongman is my favorite strength sport because it is it is it's like it's very straightforward and it's like just be really stupid strong. But it's yeah. also, you know, got enough elements to it where you need to be like conditioned for like right. like carrying medleys or like things like that. You need to yeah. have technique for stuff like stones and just be like a, a beast. And it's a lot of like it is a lot of like one rep max, but also like as many reps for stuff. It's just it's diverse as far as strength sports go. Yeah. yeah. All right, so first thing that comes to mind for music, what, what would you say? Music? You're training, what are you listening to? Oh, I've been on a big Lamb of God kick. I like them. I've been, I actually have been on a big 90s grunge kick, man. I like 90s grunge. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. I yeah. Think. I'm with it, definitely. Um, what, about, what about movies? You, you a movie guy? I love movies. I watch a lot of movies. <laughs> Favorite movie on three, what do you got? Favorite movie? I can't. That's a too hard of a question. I'll tell you my favorite thing to do with the movies. Cool. My, my one of my favorite things in general is going into a horror movie just like totally blind, like not knowing what it's about at all, like not watching trailers, and then you just go in. Yeah. Because I love horror movies, but I feel like trailers give a lot of it away. And if you go in completely, oh yeah, love it. If you go in completely blind, you're like a character because you don't you don't know what's gonna happen. That's true. That's that is a good point. Yeah, I yeah. and I'm with you on the trailers, man. The trailers give away way too. I didn't watch the final Batman trailer before I went into it, and I it just it gave it gives away it too gives much. Away so they much just, yeah. I, the, the Avengers trailer literally. The Avengers. Have you seen Avengers Endgame? Yes. Okay, cool. So I, I didn't want to spoil it. The no. Avengers Endgame final trailer. It was so stupid. It literally showed Tony Stark walking to the the time you know the quantum realm thingy with all the other oh, adventures it's like oh by the way here's a big ass spoiler yeah, oh, yeah it's like that's come on guys what the hell are we doing 
Oh man. <laughs> Sorry, rant over. <laughs> You're good. It's a good rant. <laughs> what about TV shows? Uh yeah, actually, I lied. I have a favorite movie, Starship Troopers. That's my favorite movie. I love that oh, movie. Are you? Yeah, it's a good movie. Right it's, it's on Netflix. Netflix. I know. That's that's what made me think of it. I was like, ah, that's probably it. Dude, yeah. straight up guilty pleasure. We owned that copy of v- oh, on VHS oh, when I was a kid, and I oh loved, yeah, I like, I love it even more now. It's just so so good. So wild. So good. So. TV shows. <laughs> um, I I haven't watched a ton of TV lately. I feel like I throw on movies more than I watch TV shows, to be honest. With you. Yeah, I'm a big movie guy because I'll like get home for the day and then I'm going to like eat like five bajillion calories. So I'm like, I'll throw a movie on and eat a full pizza. Right, right. I'm kind of the same boat as you. Sully, that's like my, that's like my dream night. Yeah. Every night. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Ask your... Uh, your, your yeah. Uh, so uh, this, this is one I think would be fun. And feel free to expand a little bit on this one if you want to. What would be your advice to say that 16 year old kid that says, I want to play professional rugby? What advice do you have for me? Um, get out there, play, uh, play the best teams you can. You know, if you can get on like a travel team or something or a select side, do that. At the end of the day, like skills, 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 100%. Like, don't, don't get me wrong, I love lifting weights. I'm a huge gym guy, but like, I'm not out there doing like stupid heavy zerker squats to be like, this is going to make me a better rugby player. Mm -hmm. I just do that for fun, man. Uh, You know, you you just got to play. And that's the thing in America too, especially with rugby is we don't have that much like exposure to it as kids. So we're at a huge disadvantage. You know, I've been, I've been playing since I was 16. My teammates been playing since they were six. Right. 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 Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of the Bruce Lee quote. Um, you know, you you were saying you were saying like you know do do the thing right, do the thing to get better at the thing so that you can create opportunities. You know, Bruce Lee, one of my favorite quotes of his is, "I fear not the man that has practiced ten thousand kicks once. I fear the man who has practiced one kick ten thousand times." You know, sure. really, really good at that one thing. Like you said, you don't know anything about any other sports. You don't need to know anything about other sports. You no. need to know about rugby and even more so about your you know your position, your role on. The yep. I love it. That's, I mean, that's, that's focusing on the goal, man. Keep the goal, the goal, right? Yeah, man. Keep the goal, the goal. Anything else for us? Anything, uh, any other insight? No, nothing, nothing terribly profound. No. Awesome. Well, uh, so two, two more questions for you. Um, number one, where can people find you if they want to check you out, you know, watch your savage list on Instagram or anywhere else. Yeah, so uh, I, uh, you know, Rugby ATL, mm-hmm. uh, Rugby Atlanta and Major League Rugby. Uh, give us a follow on Instagram. Oh. All our games are on the Rugby Network uh, app. i got to double check this because if I give the wrong information, I'm going to look like an idiot. All our games, yep, are on the Rugby Network app. Uh, and then my Instagram, which is literally just me lifting weights, so it's not very fun. But if you want to okay. follow it, it is okay. jazzsully563. J A S U L L Y five six three. Excellent. I'll link yep. all this below for people as well. And then the, so, so the rugby you said it's the rugby network app. The rugby network app. Everything is on there. That's yeah. awesome, dude. I'm gonna download it and I'm gonna I'm gonna watch your games. I want to learn about yeah, rugby. I'm gonna watch you out there. You better murder it. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Man. I'll do um, my best. Yeah. No, I, I've I've always been interested in it and. Uh, now, now that I like know somebody and have made a little bit more of a connection, I'll yeah. go check it out. It'll be fun. I'm in the so. same boat. It's pretty sure. cool. Awesome. Well, brother, I cannot tell you how much we appreciate your time. Uh, you know, I, I hope we didn't take you too much away from a D and D campaign or a or a magic uh, magic match. Uh, <laughs> so, just kidding. Man. Oh, yeah, it's been it's been great. It's good to catch up with you guys too. I, you know, I haven't seen you guys in ages. Oh, wow. definitely, man. If you, you know, if you find your back over, back over on this side, yeah, uh, you let us know, us, man. Yeah. We can hang out and, uh, yeah, grab a beer or whatever. And we can talk training and maybe, maybe you can show us some cool, cool lips. Um, I'm down. I'm always down. Just pick, just pick Eric up with one arm and bent, bent press yeah. you know, yeah, do, and, get, and get, do up, get, get, do get up, Quick get up. Yeah. That'd be fun. I'm in. One of my goals is to do eventually to do a Turkish get up with my wife, like use her as the weight. Yeah. That's uh. so we're, we're, we're slowly inching towards there so 
Um, but man, thank you so much for your time. We had a freaking blast with you. And I uh, want to thank everybody so much for tuning in to another episode. You know, I hope you got some great takeaways like we did. You know, here at Deadlift Dogs and Dad Jokes, we're here to help you become your strongest self and have fun along the way. So thank you so all so much. And always remember to train your body, feed your mind. Love it. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for having Holy, me. You're a bad dude. That was. Well, I appreciate you being on. What about his dad joke? Vegas. Oh, we forgot dad about joke. the dad jokes. Oh, yeah. oh, I was hoping you'd forget about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's like, All right. Um, what you got? What is Forrest Gump's password? Uh, I don't know what. One Forrest one. Oh, oh no! It's really good. That's really good. You got one, Sully? Yeah. Uh, what do you call uh, James Bond when he's taking a bath? Bubble 07. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. That's actually a really, really good pun. I stole it. I stole it from my teammate. <laughs> oh, I love it. I think it's freaking awesome. How do athletes uh, stay cool in the summer? I know, the, I know this answer, so I won't say anything. They have a lot of fans. <laughs> you said that one. You had yeah, it. I read. This is a recycle. Recycle. So. That's right. It was a good one. Give me a negative, negative, uh, negative mark for, for I think minus so, minus ten points for. Uh, I think for I think Sully beats us. Uh, Sully, that was that was good. Oh, Sully beats us out. Uh, that's all right. It was a stolen joke, though. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was good. Well, brother, appreciate your time, yeah, man. Thanks, man. Uh, we'll hit you up soon. I'll follow up with a message and send you the links and everything. Love it. Take Bye, care, brother. brother. Later, See man. you guys. Yeah.